Fans of the Horus Heresy, thank you very much for joining me for an unboxing video. It's been a while since I've done one of these for you and it's good to come back with something quite interesting and exciting. So it was Warhammer Fest this weekend, uh, Warhammer Fest 2017 and of course Warhammer Fest normally means an opportunity to pick up some early release models and Forge World haven't disappointed and I picked this particular model up. Well, we're going to do a three in one unboxing, um, but the what we're unboxing is the Legio Custodes Telemon Dreadnought. So there's been pictures of this going around for some time now. It's been previewed at several events. Basically what this is, this is like a heavy custodian dreadnought. So it probably stands about a third taller, maybe a bit more than that than a regular custodian contempt to dreadnought. This is a big guy and it's, it's, it's like a heavy dreadnought. So yeah, quite an uh, exciting and interesting model. So this is on early release at the moment. I'm not sure when the retail release will come. It tends to be maybe a month or two later with Warhammer Fest stuff. So there's three parts to this kit. There's a body and then there's two weapons uh, and these are the arms. There's the Custodes Telemon Dreadnought uh, Cestus, which is like a, a fist weapon. And then there's also a Custodes Telemon Storm Cannon. And this is this sort of rotary energy weapon or rotary barreled energy weapon. You can, you can mix and match arms, so you can have two Cestus or two Storm Cannons. I've gone for one of each, you know, just to start with. Of course, I'll be magnetizing this for weapon options. So what I'll do is we'll open the body up first and then we'll look at the weapon options. We're gonna look at this, gonna have a look at the parts, uh, make sure everything's there and have a, have a look at the model, check the kit quality. So let's begin. This, uh, this is a set, this is kind of like the, I think this is the smallest white box that Forge will do. Uh, it's the same size box as my Contempt at Achilles Dreadnought came in. Right, so we have a packet of parts and a nice, rather neat CAD computerized design booklet. So if, you, if you'd like to have a read as to what this is, there you go. If anyone wants to have a go at how many a fewer than a handful is in the comments, I'll be interested to hear. I was debating this with a friend last night and we reckoned it was about no more than, we thought it was around 10 or fewer of these things are in existence in at the time of the heresy. So they're super rare and possibly one of the most esoteric and advanced war machines ever. So yeah, so we've got the picture of the Dreadnought and you can see it's, it's heavily armored and it's got these big shoulder pauldrons and this multiple launch rocket battery or missile battery perhaps. Design cues similar to the Custodian Contemptors, the Galatus and the Achilles. And the armor, so we've got an exploded view of the model. Um, and then the usual sort of how to put it together information. It's fully posable. So you've got yeah, the usual the usual sort of high degree of posability you would expect to come with the um, Forge World Dreadnought kit. I mean, that's one of the really great things about Forge World Dreadnoughts is a posability in it. Yeah, so we've got some nice instructions. And let's have a look at what's in the pack. So we have a QC sheet. Um, this was quality controlled by SG on the 17th of May, I believe. Um, slightly over a week ago. So these are, this is fairly fresh off the production line, which is what you would expect for an early release model. And I'm going to now drop the camera down a little bit so we can see what's going on in the box more easily. There we go. Right. So let's deal with, so there's a big size base. Oh, how big is that? Is that 80 millimeters? Was that 100 millimeters? I think that's a notch up on, is that a notch up on the size of the Leviathan's base? Price wise, this compares to the Leviathan. Hmm, I'll check. Uh, <laughs> it is a, that's a 100 millimeter diameter base. So I think the Leviathan's on an 80, isn't it? So. This is on an even bigger base, so it's not quite, I'm trying to think of a size comparison, I guess it's not quite as big as a Thanatar from the Mechanicum, base-wise, but I think model-wise it compares to the Thanatar. 
Right, so let's have a look at the actual parts. Firstly, right, so start. let's start off with a really nice looking component. And this is a main torso, this is a center torso. Um, lots of, oh, I've got this fantastic, fantastic bass relief eagle with these heads. This is very much like the Contemptra Killer Dreadnought, which looked absolutely awesome. Key to remove there. Everything looks really nice. Teensy little slip there, but that's going to be hidden, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, love the component. And what should we do next? Oh, let's look at one of the super pauldrons. So these are the absolutely enormous shoulder pauldrons. When I was at Warhammer Fest yesterday, I got a chance to talk to the designer of this model, which is Will Hayes. Will Hayes, I always called the Dreadnought Man. He did the Contemptor, Leviathan, and he's done a lot of the Mechanicum robots. He did the Contemptor, Achilles, and Galatus, and now he's done uh, this guy. So I got a chance to talk to him, and I did ask him uh, about his design cues, and I said, is this inspired by Jez Goodwin's original Terminator Marine uh, from 1988? And he said, yes. And I thought, lovely. I, I love I love someone who who uh, who makes a nod back to your origins. That looks good. There's a um, little bit of material lost on the inside there, as you can see. That will fill okay though. So that's uh, that's fine. That's acceptable. Let's have a look at the other um, shoulder. There you go. That's better form this time. Beautiful, you've got uh, beautiful detailing on the surface, as is common with the custodian models. Um, they've got some very fine detailing on them, uh, which reflects, you know, well, they're, they're, they're quite frilly, but they're also deadly. So don't laugh at the frilliness. Let's have a look at the first lower leg. Lovely, beautiful, beautifully cast. Uh, filigree overload on this. Um, a nice consistency of design as well to the Contemptor Achilles and Contemptor Galatus. Got the same sort of design cues going on here. Hmm, excellent. Let's do the other, the other side. I think they had a little bit of a mold break there. Um, this doesn't, I mean, this doesn't matter to the finished model, but um, you can see there, can you see that? Um, let me get the light, might struggle there. Right, can you see, just let me get a little thing, right. You see this here? Well, that's a positive relief there. And I think there's been a slight mold, there's been a break on the mold on a previous cast and that's cast in. So I'm gonna need to, to scrape that and cut this away. And then that all because at the moment that will prevent the foot locating correctly. But that's no that's no big deal. And once it's scraped away, um, there'll be nothing to notice. Very good. All right, let's continue with parts of the torso. Here we have the rear reactor mounting and exhausts. Again, lovely detailing and design consistency across all custodian armors, all the way from the standard custodians, <laughs> if you can ever call them standard custodians. And then now it's going all the way up to this impressive war machine. A little bit of a slip there. I don't know if that will uh, show or not, but that's easy to remove. Even if, well, if it doesn't show, it doesn't matter. Whoops, but that's a small one, so it can be corrected. Right, what should we do next? Let's, let's stick, oh, right, stick up top. Here we have the rocket launcher for the top, or it's, it's actually got a slightly unusual name. Just um, let me check the instructions. Um, right, it is called the uh, Spiculus Bolt Launcher. So I wonder if those are missiles or something slightly different. They look, um, they're very sharp looking. Maybe there's something different to normal missiles. In the description, it does say it is armed with esoteric weapons, so perhaps that might be something quite unlike other weapons we've seen previously. Uh, here we have this is the top of the uh, the upper hull of a dreadnought. That's going to go there, and then we have uh, I think this is the shoulder. 
Is that the shoulder? It looks like a shoulder. Yeah, parts of shoulder assembly. I'm guessing there's going to be a second one of those somewhere. Oh, no, no, no. Right, I figured it. That's the mount for the bolt launcher. There we go. Yeah, figured it out now. So that's going to go there. That's why there's only one of those. Those are the elbows, and these are actually the shoulders. And again, very consistent design cues with the Contemptor uh, dreadnoughts from the Legio Custodes. Um, lovely, lovely casting quality. Everything is looking very clean and very nicely cast. And now let's move to the head. So nice little bits of filigree there. The design of this head just looks like a slight, like a blown up version of the uh, Contemptors. So again, consistent design cues. We've got some of the um, elbow plates. What are these guys called again? 19, there we go. Uh, Coutes. There you go, the Coutes. I need to memorize that because they keep coming up on these custodian models. And a couple of small exhausts as well, which are going to go on the hull. And then we have the waist and the hips. Got a little bit of a slippage. Let's have a look at it. The underside's fine. A little bit of slip there, you can see. Pretty little though. That will clean up fine. This will smooth down okay. And I always pin my waists on these dreadnoughts, so yeah, there's there's no worry there at all. That's that's nice, very nice. And then we have two thighs. He's got a little bit of um a bit shiny, so uh, got a bit more sludge from the molds on there. Uh, Hmm, got a bit of that, definitely got a mold slip there. You can see there, that's quite, that's actually quite prominent, that one. Uh, and there's some detail lost there. And then this slip continues up that plate. That's all right. That's okay up there. Um, I'll have to see how that works. That might be hidden when it's assembled. Um, yeah, we'll see. That might need. That might be all right. I mean, this one's fine. It's just this one that. That bit there, we've lost a bit of, a bit of detail. Now we've got a slip running across this fight. These uh, this it's like grilling. Right. So that might need a. Might might need a replacement. I think it's all right. I think I can fix that. Right, let's do some feet and then move on to weaponry. Right, so you get an alternate foot um, to add some dynamicism to your model, and that's a di so you get two feet which are stood flat, which are like that. Let's have a look at the feet. Ooh. Uh, got a slip there. Um, that won't clean up, but that will fill. So I'll fill that. Yeah, that won't clean up, but I can fill that. So that is all right. And that's if I even need to use that foot. Uh, will I need to use that foot? Let's see. Let's look at this one. Uh, that one's oh, that that one's fine. Very nice. And then let's have. Then you've got the foot that's on the move. Or the raised foot. Tiny slip there, a little bit of clean up, but right. So there we go with the body. That was very nice. Right, let's move on. What should we do next? Let's do the storm cannon because I, I I really rather like the look of this enormous rotary gun. Now we don't have a set of rules yet. I asked um is it Emma, the staff writer from Forge All, who was at Warhammer Fest if they had rules and she said they haven't done them yet. She thought they'll be releasing them as a PDF in the not too distant future when they do the retail release. So I don't know what this gun does. It looks like it's part of the Arachnus Blaze weapon family 
and Storm Cannon. I think it sounds like it's a similar sort of system to the Leviathan Storm Cannon, but this will be an energy weapon as opposed to a ballistics weapon. So let's have a look at this. This is oh, this is a great looking thing. These might be I don't know energy packs, and you've got uh, is it a six shooter, six barrels, two, six rotating barrels, two barrels. That's a cute. That's an unusual design. I don't think there are any modern guns that do that. But then again, given that this is essentially a bespoke weapon at the edge of what human technology has ever achieved i guess you can uh, pretty much do whatever you want and say that works beautifully cast that's a great looking piece and excellent gun a little bit of a uh, cleanup to do between these very fine edges but i mean that's cast remarkably well considering how thin these parts are here and you've got that narrow narrow little gap between the barrels that's uh, that's impressively cast that that's a storm can itself, and then there is a shoulder, uh, well, a lower arm in effect. And the cooters, there you go. And you get the cooters so you can make it on either, for either left or right handed use. Very nice. And that is also very nicely cast. That's going to be very easy to put together. Right, and moving on to the final part of the opening review let's look at the cestus it was a uh, it was it was interesting uh chatting with the with i wonder if i wonder if will hayes is going to sculpt more weapons for this it's always intriguing You could imagine this having a good-sized Adrathic gun on it. Yeah, I could, or maybe some, or some massive great Lastrum weapon as well. And I guess you could even have an alternate gun up top. So yeah, I think this has got potential for weapon options. Right, let's have a look at this. Let's have a look at this. So this, these are the digits or the fingers. Big, thick, heavy fingers on this. I mean, this is when it's called a cest, it's like a ram. It's it's quite well named. This looks like a, a real heavy duty combat fist. And there's a cooter which is snapped off there. A bit of mold there that's come with it. A little bit of rubber polymer it looks. Uh, but that doesn't matter because the com the actual components are all very nicely turned out. We have a lower arm. Shield, yeah, lovely stuff. Very familiar, very very familiar design of all these parts, having built the Contemptor Achilles. And with this, obviously, the parts are bigger, so this is going to be an easier model to work on and assemble. Particularly when it comes to posing, it'll be a lot. I think it'll be easier to to tack it in position for posing. Right, what are these? Right, so this. Oops, I'll try again. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. So then, what's this? There we have the digits for the opposite side. Again, with another cooter. So got, we've got some spare parts here, which is good. And then we have the actual cestus itself in effect. Right, so this bit here is gonna connect, that will connect to the elbow. And then that clicks in, or connects into that, I believe. Is that right, is that right? right? Um, Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at this. Ah, useful, yeah. So, that, oh yeah, that goes into there, and then yeah, yeah, put those in there. That's fine. Right, and and then yeah, so the digits are going to attach there, and you've got like pinpoints. Now, I don't know what. Oh, some nice filigree. Always good to get a bit more filigree. Ooh, and a surprise eagle, a surprise aquila. Now these two, I have another pair of weapons. I have no idea what they are. And I have even less idea what these are compared to the others. I mean, at least I can see that this, you know, this is some sort of arachnus blaze weapon, it appears. This looks like some sort of missile launch, but these things really don't recognize even from within the custodian range. They don't even look like the Adrathic destructor weapon style. So yeah. Is, do we have yet another unusual weapon type that's going to appear on this dreadnought? 
Interesting. But yeah, so it's got a secondary web. So it's got it's got it's very well armed. This it's got it's got the storm cannon, the wrist weapons, uh, the bolt launcher, and then the ram as well. So it looks like it's a pretty big, heavy lumbering dreadnought. I'm wondering if we're going to get, given that we're going to be staying with 7th edition for the immediate future in the Heresy, I wonder if we're actually going to get a Dreadnought here that has Armour 14 on the front. It certainly looks like it's a contender. So what do I think on this quality-wise? Um, the arm weapons, both 10 out of 10. The body, 9.5 out of 10. There's one little defect on that. Hopefully though, with not too much work, I can fix it. Oh, there you have it. There is an unpacking review of the Legio Custodes Telemon Dreadnought. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I'll now get working on building this and then we can come back to do a model review in the not too distant future, I hope. Thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time and goodbye.